Welcome to CycleCraft TV and part three of our series on relieving saddle discomfort. I am Kat Brennan, owner of CycleCraft Cycling Center in Parsippany, New Jersey, and all around the world at CycleCraft.com. To this point, we have talked about getting the right saddle and bike fit and using good quality bike shorts that fit properly. The third piece of the puzzle is reducing friction as much as possible, and that's where chamois cream comes into play. Joining me here in the CycleCraft TV studio is Rich Ferraro, AKA Dr. Butter, the mastermind behind the Underbutter skincare company. Full disclosure, we sell the Underbutter products at CycleCraft, but this video is not sponsored in any way. The reason I asked him to be in this episode is I really like his products and he really knows what he's talking about. So Dr. Butter, tell us a little bit about how you found yourself in the skincare products game. Oh, Kat, thanks so much for having us. It's a really important topic talking about skin protection. Um, I really fell into uh, skincare, quite honestly. I started cycling late in life and um, as a way to just keep active in between other sports. And like anyone who starts cycling, you, st you tend to start cycling more and more. <laughs> and uh, then very quickly, I started becoming interested in racing and putting on more and more hours. And that's when I started to develop the typical issues that everyone deals with, with cycling, saddle sores, skin irritation, everything that people talk about. Um, I have a chemistry background in, in um, chemical engineering and I'm in biotech and manufacturing. And so I'm a little bit aware about chemicals, compounds and natural ingredients. And when I started to look at the products that were out there, I found that a lot of them um, really were basically the equivalent of moisturizers and not really designed for the purpose. Um, also, when you look at some of the products that are out there, there's a lot of sort of tongue in cheek names and it's kind of a little bit of a fun industry, but you know, I wanted to take it more seriously. So I set out to look into, you know, could we develop skincare products that are naturally derived or using natural ingredients, but can really perform and most of all, just kind of take it seriously. Okay, so before we get too deep into this, let's talk about the real problem, which is friction. Why is that so important? Not to gross you out too much, but when you ride a bike, you can get little micro tears in your skin from chafing. Bacteria beds itself into the tears and can sometimes lead to small infections or saddle sores. Sometimes they're not so small. So the less friction there is, the less likely you are to get saddle sores. In our first two videos, we talked about getting the right support for your build and eliminating pressure and friction points with good shorts worn commando style next to the skin. Back in the old days when bike shorts were made from wool, the pads were made of chamois leather and these pads required conditioning to keep them supple, hence chamois cream. After you ride, you would wash your shorts and then rub in some chamois cream, which would keep the leather supple and also help reduce friction between the shorts and the skin. Fast forward to today, and bike shorts all use synthetic pads that don't require conditioning, but there is still need for lubrication between the pad and the skin. But what should you use? Can any old ointment do the trick? And that's why I asked Dr. Butter to come by. He knows a thing or two about the fiery crotch problems facing cyclists. So let's get into it. Take it away, Doc. What do we need to know about putting out the fire? All right, Kat, we're gonna tackle this problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the real issue is um, there's a general misconception about what chamois cream should do. Yes, we're talking about friction here, but um, a lot of companies at first focus too much on trying to create this really ultra slick boundary between your skin and the chamois. And um, really there's some other factors coming in here. What we want to think about is conditioning the skin mm -hmm. and finding a way to make sure that you're using a product that can reduce friction, but also work in the environment that we're dealing with, right? Which has to do with a lot of moisture because we're sweating, a lot of people are on the indoor trainer, and all these things are, are causing issues that um, result in ultimately in saddle sores. So we're trying to reduce friction, but also we wanna make sure to condition. So back in the day, when, when companies were looking for ways to reduce friction, they looked to very slick and synthetic materials or they use um, a lot of petroleum byproducts like mineral oil, um, which can be really problematic for people. They can cause irritation in itself and people that have um, sensitivities to parabens, mineral oils, and synthetic chemicals really have a problem. So we want to take a different approach and try to look for natural ingredients that have friction reduction properties, but also work to condition the skin so that you don't develop chasing, chafing issues in the first place. I'd really like to know what makes your product more effective as opposed to the products of the past. Okay, yeah. 
So, you know, looking to my engineering background and scientific background, when I decided to set out to develop a chamois cream, I realized right away that the first problem or the gap was that there's sort of a lack of data and test methods around chamois creams. You know, in cycling, we, we, we test and measure everything, right? Friction, uh, weight, power, everything, uh, aerodynamics, you name it. But when it came to chamois cream, there was no data, no testing. So I looked to other industries, particularly in the cosmetic and skincare, for ways that you could test chamois creams to look at friction reduction, but also moisture capacity, which is very important because we want to make sure that when you introduce moisture to the chamois cream, its characteristics remain the same, right? Because especially over time. So I developed test methods to actually do that, which is sort of an industry first. And once you can develop a test method, then you can try different ingredients to see, is it performing better or worse in those conditions? Is um, the shea butter condition the skin very well, but maybe doesn't hold up the moisture so much? And if so, what other natural ingredients could you put in there? So the real difference between our chamois cream and others is that we developed and looked at ingredients that have specific characteristics for friction reduction, for conditioning, um, being compatible with moisture, and also just durability over time. So one of the reasons that I had shied away from using these types of products in the past is because a lot of them contain menthol, which for me was pretty uncomfortable. And I'm curious if you, uh, if you use that in your product um, and are the products safe for both men and women? Is there a women specific product? Right, right, great question. Um, our general way of working is we don't add ingredients that don't serve a purpose. Mm -hmm. So menthol does give a cooling sensation or something like that, but really the issue for us around menthol is generally it's chemically derived menthol. You can have natural menthol that's derived from peppermint oil, um, but most products are using a chemically derived one, which again is just putting something in there that doesn't really serve a purpose other than to give you that cooling sensation. Um, so in, in, on the topic of uh, compatibility with men, women, we like to say that we're compatible for men, women, any human, because uh, our products are using all natural ingredients. We're also petroleum byproduct free, um, no phthalates, no parabens. So basically all of our ingredients, even the, um, even the preservatives that we use are naturally derived preservatives. Mm -hmm. So we're really trying to use ingredients that are compatible with anybody. So under butter may not be available everywhere, but for the folks that are listening at home who want to find a product that works well for them, what are the types of ingredients that people should be looking for in a product that will serve them well? Right. Great question. Well, you know, one of the things I tell everyone is when you're looking at any skincare product, whether it's a chamois cream or moisturizer or anything, look at the list of ingredients. And the first rule of thumb is the ingredients at the top of the list are highest concentration. So we always talk about by volume. So you'll generally see things like water is sometimes the first ingredient. Um, if, a, if a product touts that it has a natural ingredient like cocoa butter, shea butter, aloe, uh, beeswax, uh, any of these ingredients that you find in under butter, you wanna see that it's very high up on the list, which means it's high concentration. So be wary or watch out for products where they'll tout or on the packaging, you'll see really bold type, you know, coconut oil. And then it's the last thing on the list. You gotta watch out. But then you're, you know, it's a little bit of a challenge for the average consumer because you have to do a little education because, you know, under butter, one of the main ingredients you see is um, uh, capric, capric carpilic tri triglyceride, which sounds a little bit scary. What kind of chemical is that? Well, that's actually coconut oil that's been um, fractionated to separate different oils from it. Um, so it's actually naturally derived, which is another topic. So you have pure natural ingredients that are literally like right from the coconut, right from the um, cocoa seed. Um, and then you have naturally derived where you're taking those same natural ingredients, but you're processing it some way with green chemistry. So there's a little bit of um, education that you have to do, a little bit of research, but the main thing is look at those ingredients on the top of the list and make sure that ones you can recognize and ones that you can actually eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything else that we haven't covered that you can tell us about these skincare products to make us more comfortable while we're riding our bikes? Sure, I think that you generally just have to look at your anatomy and how you sit on the saddle, how you feel on the bike. Um, a lot of people will just uh, blindly put chamois cream all over the chamois, right? 
uh, just code it from top to bottom, <laughs> inside and out. And then uh, you ask, uh, you know, where do you have saddle sores? And it might be just one location on their body. And, uh, and, and you know, so it's kind of, um, you really don't need that material. You don't need that much product. Um, a lot of times look at the kits that you're wearing. Sometimes there'll be stitching or something that causes like an inner thigh abrasion. And really that's the only uh, area you need to be concerned about. Um, so, you know, yes, we're using natural ingredients, but you don't need to use so much product if, it, if it's not serving a purpose. So generally, I would say just look at how the kit fits, where do you generally get abrasion, and then uh, address it with the product in that specific area. And then also, of course, if you are getting uh, saddle sores or rashes in one specific area, it's probably time to talk about a bike fit or how you're fitting on, the, on your saddle in general anyway. Exactly. So the age old question, do we apply it to the skin or to the chamois? Okay, there's no direct answer for that. I generally say apply to the skin because you generally know where you're getting saddle sores or just general friction and irritation. So apply it to the skin. Uh, we, as you were saying in the intro at the beginning, when chamois were made of different materials where you actually had to condition the material of the chamois, it made sense to do that. But now, sometimes, depending on the um, synthetic materials used in the chamois, they can actually absorb the chamois cream. And so that'll actually bring it away from your skin, which you don't want to happen. Right. So I always say first rule of thumb, try it on the skin in a particular area where, you're, where you have a friction issue or irritation. If you've been assuming that saddle and crotch discomfort was something that you had to learn to live with, there's hope. The right saddle combined with the right shorts and a little pre-ride prep with the right skin care will change your life. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to see more CycleCraft TV, go ahead and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date. Thanks for watching CycleCraft TV and remember to keep the rubber side down.